Hey, good morning, Dr. Grant Woods and his incredible team. Just wanted to shoot you a video to say thank you for all you guys have done for us. Uh, this is our first full year of owning this property that's never been planted before. And uh, your partnership with Eagle Seed and Genesis Drill has made this incredible soybean food plot with Gamekeeper possible. And this morning we're drilling into it with the Genesis Drill in the Fall Buffalo brand. Thanks again for everything you've done. Throughout most of the Whitetails range, it's time to plant fall or cool season forage. And the forage we're planting now, well, it has a heavy job to do. It needs to feed and attract deer for about six months or until spring green up. Earlier this year, about July, we shared that we were planting Eagle Seeds Experimental Summer Soil Builder Blend. And the purpose of that was to provide some quality forage for deer and also drastically improve soil health. Like most land managers, we've got some small hidey hole type food plots and deer were browsing the beans in those plots so hard that they couldn't form a canopy. Then we got hit by a wicked drought. We needed to plant something in there to improve the soil, feed deer, and keep the weeds at bay. And the answer was Eagle Seeds Experimental Summer Blend. This blend isn't mature. Remember, we didn't plant it until July, so we couldn't terminate it with the Goliath crimper. Crimping works well when plants are making seeds and they're very stressed. Just crimping a green plant, a lot of them will stand back up. So we terminated the crop using herbicide, and since then, we've had some good rains and there's adequate soil moisture. So it's time to plant our fall crops. Growing Deer is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Also by Reconix. Trophy Rock, Eagle Seed, Nikon, Winchester, Lacrosse Footwear, Flatwood Natives, Morel Targets, Non Typical Wildlife Solutions, Hooks Custom Calls, Montana Decoy, Summit Tree Stands, Drake Non Typical Clothing, House Lubricator, RTP Outdoors, Yamaha, Fort Arrow, Scent Crusher, iScope, Mossy Oak Properties of the Heartland, Hunter's Blend Coffee, Motorola Lighting Solutions, Scorpion Venom Archery, Code Blue, Decode, G5 Broadheads, Prime Bows, and Redneck Hunting Blinds. Late August, and it's time to establish our cool season or fall food plots. And we're planting into an experimental blend we did with Eagle Seed. The big bulky stuff you're seeing everywhere, well, we knew deer didn't eat that variety. We planted it or included it in the blend to develop a lot of biomass that will become slow-release fertilizer. It's easy to see the tons of biomass from that summer crop on top of the soil. That turns into mulch, which turns into slow-release fertilizer. It keeps the soil temperature down, conserves soil moisture, and limits erosion. All wonderful things to improve soil health. Another advantage that's not obvious is the tons of roots these seven different varieties put in the soil. Each different variety has a different root structure. Some go really deep and big and fibrous. Others are smaller roots. And the advantage of that is they're collecting different nutrients that settle at different depths throughout the soil profile. It's also easier to drill in to this mulch on top of the ground than over our rocky soil or even good quality soil. Research shows tractors actually use two to three gallons of diesel less an hour when rolling over vegetation versus bare dirt. There's a lot of advantages to the buffalo system, but the biggest is high quality forage because I can't wait to hunt deer in this plot. Most fall blends or species designed to be planted in the fall do best when planted about 45 to 60 days before the first average frost date. Average frost date not only means when the temperatures are getting cool and plants can't grow as quick, but it's also an indication of the length of days getting shorter and shorter. And plants are really triggered by the length of the day as far as growing and maturing. 
Some species don't survive the first frost. I usually don't include those in blends. Others simply slow down or don't grow as quick. So it's important to get planted in that 45 to 60 day window to get those seeds germinated, seedlings established, and producing a lot of forage before the growth slows down. I get a lot of questions asking about can they mow the crop to terminate it. Mowing doesn't terminate a lot of weeds or crops, so you'd have to wait till everything had made seeds and then mow it, which would probably give you a planted weed base. Mowing doesn't terminate most crops and weeds. You know that from your yard. In addition, mowing doesn't spread the mulch evenly across the soil surface, so you end up with thick spots and bare spots. Not ideal for the buffalo system. Right little opening in timber, we call blackberry patch. There's a little blackberry patch in Milda's old logging deck. And on the edge here is a scrape that deer have used year after year. It's the first one I'm gonna doctor up this year. I use a lot of mock scrapes, but this is a real scrape. I just wanna get the buck's pattern on coming here before they develop too many scrapes in other places. We had some cool Reconyx footage last year of one of our bucks, Louie, using this scrape. I'm gonna use bucks in this early season because the bucks are still very social in basher groups. As they start shedding velvet and that testosterone level starts increasing, to be some competition, bucks changing territories, shifting around a little bit, and buck scent is ideal to get bucks checking out who's in that area this time of year. I just sprayed my boots and cleaned my hands good with decode, so I'm pretty scent free. I'm gonna just put the wick on this limb. It's gonna drip right in the scrape. So I'm just barely grabbing the top. Just getting it on there just like that. Once the wick's in place, I simply take the lid off, saturate the wick, it won't take but a few seconds, it'll swell up about a half inch, put the lid back on, squirt the ground a time or two, back over here to a tree, put my Reconyx up, and see which bucks are using this scrape. And it won't take long. Oh, look at that, I can see it already, I'm just gonna do that. And that baby is doing its magic. Now, a little bit's gonna come off of it now, but over the next week, just a drip or two will come down like you see now, and up this height, the wind is swirling around, taking that scent all through the woods. Last step is I'll mist a couple limbs right here and put a little on the ground, making sure I don't reach under the drip because I don't want it on me. Last step, for me anyway, is walk over about 10 yards, put a Reconyx up, focus right on the scrape and on the edge of the timber so I can see which bucks and does are in the area. You can tell from the scar, we've used this cedar tree in the past. It's the perfect location to monitor this scrape. I love using the Reconyx Ultra Fire because it takes video, really high quality video. And video is so much cooler than just a still picture. Bucks are moving and maybe walking through. You can tell a lot more about them with video than a bunch of still pictures. I'm gonna fasten it to the tree. I like mine really tight so there's no slop in there. And that's easy with these straps. Once the camera's on the tree, I aim the best I can, and there's a walk feature on the Reconyx. But a little trick I use is walk out there and look back at the camera. If I'm seeing the same amount of both sides, I know it's pointed exactly where I want it. I always tie any excess of my strap up so it doesn't flop in front of the camera somehow. Scrapes are simply a communication hub. They're not a territorial marker like used to be thought. I think of scrapes as like the old phone booths. Someone goes there to communicate and leaves. And that's exactly what happens at a scrape. They're communicating by leaving scents from different glands. That's why now is a great time to freshen up existing scrapes or create mock scrapes. A 
big advantage of using these two tools, freshening or mock scrapes, is that you can get a buck conditioned and patterned to using that scrape that's in a favorable hunting location. This is a very easy and effective technique to learn which bucks are using an area. And we'll keep you posted on the results from the blackberry patch and other scrapes we're monitoring. If you like this type of information, please subscribe to the Growing Deer Weekly Newsletter. This time of year when changes are happening fairly rapidly is a perfect time to get outside and enjoy creation. But every day of the year, every single day, it's important to find some time to be quiet, slow down, and listen to what the Creator is saying to you. Thanks for watching Growing Deer.